Welcome to Strategy Saturday. I'm Charles Crillo, and today we're going to be discussing what do multifamily property managers charge? And this is very important even if you're self-managing property, because at some point, you're most likely going to bring on a third-party manager so that you can scale your portfolio. And knowing exactly what a third-party manager will charge in your area on your type of properties that you own is important when you're calculating out your actual uh returns and your actual cash flow on that property. So monthly fee is usually how uh, is usually how you pay a property manager. And it's a monthly fee that has a percentage of the monthly rent collected, typically six to 10%. Now, if you're getting 50 plus units in a property or 50 plus units in a portfolio, uh, this will start decreasing. You're also paying hourly rate for handymen. There'll be additional fees are possible depending on what the manager is handling and what you're handling yourself, such as if you have someone else working, um, that's going to be something that you're paying to your handyman or leasing agent, but not to your handyman. Now, the monthly fee is a percentage of the monthly rent collected. Typically, monthly management fees for residential multifamily properties can vary greatly by the property, location, the class of the property, services rendered, but typically run in the 6 to 10% of rent range for basic management. Larger properties will see decreased rates when there is on-site management. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, on-site management in a second. The percentage depends on the geographic area your property is located in, as well as the services rendered. For example, vacant properties sometimes require more work from the management company, such as conducting weekly inspections for potential break-ins or paying the utility bills, hence uh, a slightly higher rate. Now, with an hourly rate, when we're talking about this, it's some property management companies will offer a fixed fee structure in lieu of collecting a fee based on a percentage of a month's rent. And this might be with smaller properties. And when you're talking smaller properties like residential properties, so if you own a condo or something, they might just give you a fixed rate every month if it's rented or if it's not, because there's still things that they're going to have to do even if there's no rent coming in. When you're just starting out with a single property, this may seem like a good bargain as a property is collecting $2,000 in monthly rent will cost you $200 per month, let's say for a condo. Usually 10% is usually what you'll see in a single condo or single family house rental. However, management companies collecting a fixed fee only may be as motivated to maximize this rental income from your property or provide any additional services. Also, once you own multiple properties, you'll also be able to ne negotiate a far better flat monthly fee that is 10% of rate, 10% uh, of rent. Now, this is very important because when you're talking, when you hire a management company, uh, find out where their tiers are and where the rate decreases come in. So I've spoken to one before, uh, I was just speaking to one and they're saying that, um, uh, their rates about 7% starting off and um, it drops around 35 or 40 units, it drops 1%. So knowing that going in that uh, you're going to be paying and what you have to hit for units before you see a decrease over the whole portfolio. And that's the whole benefit with it. It's over the whole portfolio. And so if you have investors or you own another property 100% yourself and you hit one of these tiers, That'll save you on your new properties coming up, but it's also going to save you on your properties that you already own. So any investors that you might have, or if you're in joint venture, any partners that you have, um, they're going to see that, um, that decrease in cost and their property as well. Now, on-site management is usually one admin person and one handyman per 100 units, and usually starting at around 50 to 60 units. If you have less than 50 or 60 units, you're probably not going to have on-site management. Now, some properties will have on-site if, the, if they'll have a little office on there, and they might have one like we had one that was uh, 32 units and had on-site, but we had a lot of units around it. So we're able to have an on-site leasing person and also a handyman, and it made sense. But if you just had, say, 32 units and having a full-time leasing person on site probably won't make financial sense. Now, I have a friend that has a 60 unit property and pays 6% for management. However, the management company provides a handyman for two days a week. So it really depends. In that scenario, they don't have to now hire a handyman uh, for two full days a week. They're just, it's all combined into the 6%, which makes it easier for their numbers when they're uh, doing stuff out. And also it's going to decrease costs with using that handyman because you now pretty much have someone on salary during those times. So buildings in poor condition or in poor areas, okay, you're going to be paying additional if your property requires more time or management. If you're requiring the property manager to supervise a renovation or certain projects, you will be charged using a percentage of the work that's being done. So if you're having a CapEx uh, project done, like a new roof, you're having new windows put in, you're having the whole 
building patent, um, all these different things. You, it's it's very regular. If you're not, if the asset manager, the owner, is not uh, managing that project, then you're gonna have to pay a percentage, and it might be a few percent, it might be ten percent. It depends on the project, depends on what's being done, and uh, you know, it depends on what you can work out with your property manager. You're going to be charged more if the property manager needs to be on site more often than expected or that to send somebody from their office regularly to check in or if there's a higher level of turnover. And this is really this is normal when you're getting into lower end properties. You're getting into C minus and D properties. Um, this is where you require daily on site from a property manager. So you're going to be paying more for that. And that's the reason I kind of stay away from this because you it's very difficult to make money in those properties. But number two, it's just your management fees. You might see great returns when you're looking at uh, when you're looking at line of these properties or looking at a broker's uh, performa. But there's a lot of management that goes into lower class properties when you're going into them, D's and, and uh, lower C's. Now, additional fees. This is going to be something that comes up, and this is all over the place with managers. So, because a lot of people just say percentage, it's a percentage, it's a percentage. That's all they really care about. But it's very important that in our last example with my buddy that has a 60 unit at 6%, I might look at it and they say, oh, my, my rate 6%. And someone might say, oh, um, I don't want to deal with that's too expensive, right? And they don't go through and say, well, we have a full-time person for two days a week on, right? So there's a lot of different things of how it can be structured that go into um, how that property manager runs their business. And every property is going to be different. They're going to have a different strategy probably for you if they're managing a 12 unit versus, um, you know, they're managing a uh, 70 unit, right? So you have to know and go through and keep everything apples to apples when you're comparing property managers. Now, application fees paid usually from the tenant to the manager, owners on smaller properties will usually not take part in this. Okay, so I have application fees come through with one of my property managers for a small portfolio I own, and I don't take any money off that. And in, you know that's lost revenue. However, in that application fee, they're going to pocket the majority of that application fee is profit. I understand that, but you also have the person in the office that's accepting the application, and you also have the president of the manager, the manager, the property manager, uh, to he's going to uh, approve or decline the tenant. So if you're getting good tenants and this is how it works, hey, it doesn't come out of your pocket. So it's not really something I would worry too much about. All the fees become more important when everything's not working. When everything's working, um, it's a, it, you know, you're kind of paying for better service, right? Just kind of with anything else. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these fees and know exactly how you want the property to run. And if they're taking a fee that you're not even paying um, to get good tenants in there, I wouldn't worry about too much. Now, when you get into larger apartment complexes, you're probably gonna have on-site people they be paying these application fees. This is more something where you're going to be taking a, a, a big chunk of that. And you might have a, a system set up where if you have an on-site actual like, you know, president of your management company or something of, of your small complex or something like this, that's on-site all day long. So if you have a 200 unit property, you might have like four people, two leasing people, two handymen, and you might have actually like one manager that's making decisions on who's approved to come in and who's declined. Or they might take all that information from those four people on site, send it to the main office, and uh, that's where you're paying your property manager, right? Where the property manager is like, yes, no, and that all day long, they're approving or declining tenants based on the application and the background check. Next is advertising marketing fees. Okay, in addition to actual costs, um, and it's better for asset managers to handle, I feel. So if they're gonna charge you for different advertising, um, usually I find that the, pro the property managers aren't as effective marketing as you could be. So if I was doing asset management, I want to handle, um, I don't wanna take any of the calls or deal with any of the, um, the tenants, but I wanna make that property manager's phone ring for my property, right? So I'm gonna spend more time probably promoting uh, our property ourselves and not really have the manager do that. I'd keep that as an asset manager role. Um, the other thing too is that I'm gonna focus on handling a lot of the CapEx renovation project management myself. I wanna see how it's going. Um, I wanna see that for myself if it's a pro property I own myself or a joint venture that I have with partners, we're gonna do that for sure. And of course, if I have investors, I can't just say, hey, um, Another third party is going to handle this huge project that we're, we have, we're doing, you know, 
Um, not very professional. Next is eviction fees. Um, most property managers won't charge you for eviction fees. Uh, some will. You see a lot of these fees that you're paying your property manager on smaller properties. Once you get into bigger properties, there's a lot more money uh, generated from you, from your properties. So you're going to see a lot of these fees decreased or uh, completely uh, eliminated. Okay. So if you're paying an eviction fee, I've never done that, where if someone gets evicted, they're going to charge you the property manager and then have a lawyer charge you. I see that as kind of uh, frivolous. Next is late fees. Um, you should be keeping late fees. Um, if they're actually going to collect them and you have to pay a little bit back to the property manager, fine. But I'm not going to give all the late fees to the property manager. Now, I understand if you give a little bit back, but not all of it, right? And if they actually collect them and they put their foot down on them, um, great, fantastic. Uh, they should be compensated a little bit on that. And if I'm charging a $50 late fee and I have to give them um, 10, 20, $25 out of that, fine. It's another $25 that I would never have gotten. And um, it probably will push that tenant to pay on time next month, which is the goal of all of this. Um, next is leasing fees. This is very common. Every time something's leased, they will charge a fee for it. Um, it usually, um, I have a deal right now with one of my property managers where we pay $250. They have an agent that they work with for all their thousands of units and they pay this agent or this broker brokerage uh, 250. That's what I pay every time they lease an apartment. And that's it. I used to not have to pay that fee. And then I was able to, when they brought it on, it saved a lot of time on, uh, on, uh, on their end. But also it sped up and minimized my downtime on the units. So if you rent, if you're renting a unit for a thousand dollars and you were able to get someone in there two weeks earlier because you have a full time person that's focused on renting your apartment to a good person and they're on a hundred percent commission, that's pretty good. And two hundred fifty dollars isn't that much. You're going to see a lot more fees um, for from other property managers. I've seen some that charge maybe one hundred seventy five. They might charge two hundred. Uh, they might charge. Someone just told me they some they saw someone that was uh, three hundred fifty dollars. It all depends on your market. And depends on how much work goes into finding a good tenant. It also comes down to marketing. If you are making your property manager's phone ring off the hook when you have a vacancy, right, with marketing campaign that you're doing or your virtual assistants are doing for you, um, that's going to make it a lot easier for them. They're going to have a lot more leads coming, right? They're renting an apartment. They have 40 people that call, right? And they get uh, a few applications and they can really hand pick a good tenant. Well, you're going to most likely not be paying as much in these leasing fees because it's less work for them. Renewal fees are something that you'll get charged here or there. And that's on the 13th month when a lease is renewing, you're going to pay a fee to your property manager. And that's very common. I've seen some that go several hundred dollars and I feel it's pretty high, but um, it it's, is a fee that you'll look out for. But if it's on the lower end, it's something I might not worry too much about. It also depends on the size of the property. Um now, sales commission for selling your property, this is possible because if you're a property manager, they're most likely or they have to be a licensed brokerage, but they're probably not going to sell your property. So they're probably not going to be selling you, uh, charging you a sales commission when you sell your property. The other thing too is they're going to want to earn the business of the buyer. So when they're earning the business of the buyer, uh, they're probably not going to want to leave a bad taste in your mouth, right? And they're going to want to get that business. And the because the buyers can ask you, how is this management company? And would you recommend them? Now, most fees you charge will go to the owner's bottom line. And some will be shared with your PM, your property manager, while a couple may be kept by your PM, like the application fees in some situations or renewals. But, um, you know, you have to see what they're charging and what they're doing. And that's really what the results, if you're getting good results from what they're doing, I would take that into consideration. Um, as we as we close up here, the best way of finding property managers is by referral. So if you if you are find property owners in your area that have professional managers, um, third party managers, and uh, that have similar properties to you in nearby in the vicinity of where your properties are, and ask them for a referral of who they are, and that's the best way of doing it. Because if you start looking online, um, you're going to get inundated with all different type of managers. Where you really want to find one that knows your market, uh, knows your size of your property, and knows the class of your property. So I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, submit comments, and potential show topics at globalinvestorspodcast.com. Look forward to two more episodes next week. See you then.
Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Syndication Superstars, LLC, exclusively.